All right, so we've dealt with regular folders. We've dealt with take folders for audio. But now, what if we have some MIDI stuff that we want to turn into a take folder? Well, I'm going to have to zoom back out on this session so that I can get back to where we started from. So I'm going to double click, and it takes me back to my folders. I'm going to hit mute to mute the Lila Vox, and I'll go back up another level. And here's that drum beat that we were using. So I'm going to unmute this folder and mute this folder to make sure that I can hear the stuff that's going on in here. I'll double click. And there we have the drum beat and we have this folder. Um, I'll go into the drum beat here, double click. And I'm gonna go ahead and record a new drum beat. All right. All right, and of course I'm going to quantize it. <laughs> and that wasn't so great. Now, if I was to record again, it's just going to make another region show up on top of the region that I have there right now. Maybe I want to do something different. So I'm going to go to my project settings and go to recording. And this tells me how MIDI is going to be handled in recording. So right now it says overlapping recordings merge only in cycle record. Okay, so when this cycles back around, if I'm still playing, it's going to merge my MIDI data into this region. If I merge with selected regions, that means that this region has to be selected first before it merges the other MIDI data into it. If the region is unselected, then it'll actually layer another region on top of this one. Create take folders. Well, we're going to do that in just a second. Create tracks and cycle record. That's really handy, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Create tracks and mute and cycle record. Also very handy. But let's go to take folders, and let's see how this behaves. I can actually change the length of my folder here. Now, it's very important to note that yeah, my folder is only going this long, but my cycle mode's going all the way over here. So I'm gonna actually pull my cycle mode back. And let's see how this manages with the take folder. Now I'm going to grab the take folder, and you'll note that if I click on it, it doesn't give me all of my normal quantize and dynamic markings and all that kind of stuff. I have to open it up, and I can click on each individual take. And on each individual take, I can go up and I can adjust the quantize. So I'll make this one triple it. Maybe this one I'll put straight time again. So it's kind of cool. Even though they're in a take folder, I still have the ability to edit these settings in my inspector. All right, so now I have to choose between them. Now, do I get to do swipe comping? The answer is no. You cannot do swipe comping in the MIDI world. This has to do with the fact that MIDI is a control language. It's not like audio. Um, so I can't like cut in the middle of a note and have that play back correctly. It's not gonna work. So I basically have to choose which take I want and then commit to it. In this way, I find that the MIDI tracks are a bit more limited than the audio uh, take folders. So, you know, we can still rename it, we can delete a take, we can flatten, we can unpack all the takes to new tracks. Honestly, I'm not as keen on using take folders for MIDI. I'd rather use regular folders. It tends to work better for me. So, here's a couple other techniques that you might like for doing that sort of thing. 
I'm going to go ahead and make this even shorter. So again, this is where my folder ends, and then this is my cycle mode. So I'm going to record each drum, one drum at a time, and I'm going to use a different recording setting. I'm going to say, create tracks and cycle record. It's going to automatically make a track for every time it comes around. Okay, so we're going to record again. One thing that's important to remember is that we're inside a folder, and once again, make sure that your folder is not muted when you play your instrument. Because now it's going to cycle around, and if our folder is muted, it won't play back. And I want to be able to hear how the parts are layering on top of each other. So I'm going to start with a kick and put a snare and put hats. And then, of course, I'm going to quantize. If I double click on the background, it takes me back out. Now I see that you see how my folder actually goes before bar one. That's because when I was recording, I hit the MIDI note slightly before bar one. So it's assuming that I wanted to pick up note. I don't want to pick up note, so I'm going to take my folder, I'm going to resize it, and then I'm going to take my session start, which is this bit, and I'm going to pull it back up to one. Nice. You'll notice that I actually, when I recorded those drums, I recorded them within a folder, so I didn't have to go and pack a folder. I was already in a folder. I just recorded it inside the folder, and it all was packed in there. So that's kind of the opposite from going and recording a bunch of regions and then packing the folder. So recording in a folder is something we're going to talk about when we start talking about audio recording, because it can be a way to um, kind of quickly and efficiently create takes. So that, at its essence, is how MIDI take folders work. They're not quite as flexible as audio take folders, and usually I'll use other techniques and just regular folders when I'm using MIDI.